In 1.4, we are talking about uh, more about linear functions in slope or rate of change. Um, one good thing to think about is anytime you hear slope, think rate of change, or anytime you think hear rate of change, think slope, um, especially when, when we're interpreting statements. Okay, so the definition of a slope is um, given mathematically right here. Okay, and the letter we usually use to represent slope is an M, so I'm actually going to put the M equals this here. Um, and it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y, or x2 minus x1. But really what you need to be thinking of is it's the change in y over change in x. Um, and so the symbol for change is a delta, looks like a triangle, a capital Greek letter delta. So change in y over change in x is what we think of when we think of slope. So it doesn't really matter which one is x1, which one's y1, you know, which one is, or which point is x1, y1, and which point is x2, y2. You just need to be consistent that the, um, that the two numbers that are on top of each other are the two ordered pairs, or two coordinates from the same ordered pair. Okay, so, um, and the, when x2 minus x1 does not equal zero is included because if, if x2 and x1 are the same point, we have two points that are on top of each other, and then we cannot, ha we have an undefined slope because it's a vertical line. Okay, so here's pictures. Um, a positive, positive slope as we go from left to right, that function is increasing, so the slope m is greater than zero. Um, for a negative slope, we are falling from left to right, so we're going down. This function is decreasing, so we would say this is increasing, this is decreasing. If the slope is zero, then the rate of change of y with respect to x, or the, hor the vertical change over, um, over horizontal change is zero, so that means we have a constant function. Okay, and then if we have, again, two points on top of each other, we have an undefined slope, uh, which is what we get for a vertical line, okay? All right, so a few examples here. Um, and I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use, this is my first point, this is my second point, so my slope is change in y, so four minus one over change in x, three minus two, which gives me 3 over 1, which is 3. That is a positive number. So this function, let's see, is, uh, or the line through those two points is rising. So rises here, okay? Um, from here to here, the first thing I notice is that my y2 values are the same, and I'm going to write it out. But really, negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. If I have the same values, I don't really even need to write this out. I already know my slope is going to be 0. So this is a horizontal line, okay? This one right here, again, I can write out my slope, or I notice that the two x-coordinates are the same, meaning that these two points are on top of each other. So this is a vertical line, and the slope is undefined. And, okay, these two right here, so I'm going to do, these are different points, so I'm going to do y2 minus y1, so negative 2 minus negative 4 over, uh, sorry, 4 minus 6, that's, I need to go, if I go this way, I have to go this way with the x-coordinates as well, so 4 minus 6, so negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 4 minus 6 is negative 2, so that's a negative 1, so this one falls from left to right. Okay, a um, few different forms for the equation of a line. Um, point slope form uh, is my personal preference. I like point slope form the best because it does not require any computation. In point slope form, m, the quantity that's being multiplied by x minus an x1 value, is your slope. And then your x1, y1 ordered pair goes here and here. Please notice that they're being subtracted. So if you see x plus 5, your x1 value is actually a negative 5 because x plus 5 is the same as x minus negative 5. Um, and I'll go ahead and do this example, then come back to the other form. So here, I have a slope of two-thirds, and I have an ordered pair of negative two, positive one, because this is x minus negative two, and this is y minus one. So to graph this, I'm going to put a point at negative two, one. And then I have my slope of two-thirds, which means up two and right three. And I get a second point. I'm going to do a couple more points just to make sure my line is consistent all the way through, draw the line, put the arrows on the end. Okay, for the second form, we have slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Again, m represents the slope. b represents the y-intercept. In other words, we have a point at 0, b. We need two things to write the equation of a line, a slope and a point. 
Over here, our point was the coordinates x1, y1. Over here, we take this number and it's 0, comma that number. So on the graph of y equals negative 2x plus 3, I'm going to start with the point at 0, 3. So 0, 3 is my point, my y-intercept. And then my slope is negative 2, or as a fraction, that would be negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to go down 2 and right 1. Down 2, right 1. Okay, and really we only need two points, but I've got an extra one there. Connect them and put the arrows on there, okay? Then the last one here, the general form um, could take either one of these where our constant is on the right or the constant could be on the left and it's set equal to zero. It doesn't really matter. Um, I would just try and be consistent about whichever form you're using. So our slope here is the opposite of A over B, okay? Um, now I'm going to say the opposite of A over B. I don't want to say negative because if... A or B is already negative, then that becomes positive, but it's the opposite of A over B. Um, if you were to take either of these forms and try and isolate the Y, you would be subtracting AX and then dividing by B. So we would have an A, as a negative A is the coefficient for the X, and then you would be dividing by B. So it's the opposite of A over B. Also, it doesn't really matter that that negative is down in the denominator. The reason it is written right here is because in general form, A is always positive. OK, and um, the B could potentially be negative. So that way you're not changing a negative to a negative if your A is positive. Again, doesn't really matter. It's just the opposite of A over B. OK, and then our Y intercept is C over B. But this is this is only if using this form right here. If we're in this form over here, move that constant to the other side, and then take that constant and divide it by the, uh, the y value, okay? Um, because right here, if I sub like if I had a, let's say, a plus 7, I would have to subtract 7 and then divide by b, so it would actually be negative c over b. So um, I would say just in general don't use this one, but just be able to recognize it if you're given that. Okay, so um, the other thing you could think about instead of trying to memorize a bunch of letters is you could say if I want to know what my y-intercept is, well, I just need to plug in 0 for x, okay? And then whatever value I get out is the y-intercept. Okay, so to graph this one, um, again, I'm going to start with a point. So my if I want to start with my y-intercept, it's going to be the point 0, comma, and then I'm going to take this and divide it by this, so 5 halves, or 2.5. So 0, 2.5. And then my slope is the opposite of A over B. A is the coefficient of X, B is the coefficient of Y, so negative 4 over 2 is reduced to negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to count down 2 and write 1, and I am kind of counting in between these lines, so just be careful. All right, and connect. Okay, writing the equation of a line. Um, Again, we need a point and we need a slope. If we don't have the slope given and we just have two points, then use the two points to find the slope and then plug it into whatever form you're looking for. Um, I would strongly recommend that you always start with point slope form, especially because if that's what you're looking for, you can just stop right there. It requires no solving as opposed to the uh, general form and the slope intercept form. So always start with point slope inter intercept form and then, nope, sorry, point slope form and then rewrite if necessary. Okay, so a few examples here, and I would suggest um, if you want to watch one and then pause it and try some, you can, or if you think you know what you're doing, go ahead and pause now and then resume and see if we get the same things. So here I have a slope m of negative 2 thirds and a point at 6, negative 2. So in point slope form, y minus negative 2 equals m negative 2 thirds times x minus 6, okay? And uh, we're doing point slope and slope intercept. So there's point slope, although I could make this plus a positive, and I'm done. But then for slope intercept form, I need to solve for y and I need to distribute this. So it's going to be y plus 2 equals negative 2 thirds x, and then negative 2 thirds times negative 6 is positive, and then 2 thirds of 6 is 4, and then subtract 2 from both sides. And there's our slope intercept. So this one is the point slope, this one is slope intercept. Okay, again, slope is given, point is given, so y plus 2, that's minus the negative 2 here, equals negative 1 half times the quantity x minus negative 1 is plus 1. Okay, point slope is done. 
um, to solve for y, that will give me slope-intercept form. So I'm going to distribute the negative 1 half, negative 1 half x minus 1 half, and then subtract 2 from both sides. So y equals negative 1 half x. And so if I have negative 1 half and I'm subtracting 2, you could write minus 2.5, or that would be minus 5 over 2. And so that's slope-intercept. Okay, another two, so y, oh, no, we need to find the slope first. Okay, so the slope is y2 minus y1, so 4 plus 1 over 2 plus 3, which is 5 over 5, which is 1. So now I can use either point. I'm going to use the one with positive values. So y minus 4 equals 1 times the quantity x minus 2. That's my point slope form, or you could leave the 1 off. It doesn't change anything. To change it to slope-intercept form, I'm going to add 4, so y equals x, and then negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Okay, one more here. Again, we find the slope first, so negative 2 plus 6 over 3 plus 3 gives me 4 over 6, which is reduced to 2 thirds. So point slope form, y, and I'm going to use, we, I can use either point, I'll get the same equation, I'm going to use the one that is on the right, just because I prefer positives if possible, so y minus negative 2, so y plus 2 equals 2 thirds times x minus 3, so there's my point slope, and then I'm going to distribute that, and then subtract 2 for slope intercept, so y plus 2 equals 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds of 3 is 2, subtract 2 from both sides, I get y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Okay, next, horizontal and vertical. Um, it would be better if you did not spend a lot of effort trying to memorize formulas here. Just understand that a horizontal line is a constant function, meaning every point has the same height, meaning every y coordinate is the same. Okay, so for the line y equals 5, that means all of the points that have a y value of 5, which would be all of these those are on the line, so there's your line, okay? Same thing with vertical. Um, the slope is undefined, but vertical lines have an equation as x equals a constant instead of y equals a constant. All right, um, use given conditions to write an equation for each line in point-slope form and slope-intercept form. Um, I'm just going to do point-slope form because we've already had practice going between the two, but if you have questions, look on the, um, the notes key. It's on there. And then we are going to graph them. Um, this should be graph each equation on the rectangular or in the rectangular coordinate system. Okay, so first I need to find my slope. Um, oh, no, I don't actually because these are the same number. So as soon as I see that they're the same number, I know that my, I don't care what those x coordinates are. I know that my equation is y equals negative 1 because y is negative 1. So here's negative 1. On the y-axis, there's my line. Um, I also really don't need to worry about point slope or slope intercept because it's just y equals one, negative 1 either way. Okay, Here, I notice the two x values have the same coordinate, so x is 3 regardless of the y values. Go to 3 on the x-axis, and there's my equation, or there's my line. Okay. Um, so for these four, we have some equations given, and we are asked for slope and y-intercept, in some cases x-intercept, and then we are going to graph them. Okay, if you would like to pause, this is kind of just putting together what we just did. If you would like to pause and try them, then you can come back and look and see if we got the same thing. So for this one, my slope is 3, my y-intercept is negative 2, so I'm going to start at a point. 0, negative 2, and count, and 3 is the same as 3 over 1, so I'm going to count up 3, 1, 2, 3, and write 1. Do it a couple more times. And there's my line. Okay, this one, my slope is negative 2 over 5. My y, not negative 2 over 5x, remember not to include x on your slope, it's just the coefficient. My y-intercept is 0 because there's nothing being added here, so that means it's passing through the origin. and has a slope that goes down to and right 5. I'm going to go up 2 and left 5 as well just for an extra point and then connect, draw arrows, and done. Okay, last two. Um, on this one, I, um, 
I could solve for y. I really could graph from standard form, but we'll go ahead and, and rearrange a little bit. So um, I'm going to add 20 first. So 6x minus 5y equals 20. And then to solve for y, I'm going to subtract 6x. And then divide everything by negative 5. So I get what I'm coming down here now. y equals, so negative 6 over negative 5 is 6 fifths x. Please don't put the x in the denominator. It is not 6 over 5x. That is wrong. Okay, you can put it in the numerator if you want. You could write it as 6x over 5, and that's fine. And then 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So my slope is 6 fifths. My y-intercept is 0, negative 4. So I have a point, 1, 2, 3, 4 down, and a slope of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up. 5 to the right, and there's my line. Okay. Last one, um, for this one, I'm not going to solve for y because I'm these. when I look at this, I notice that four, 12 is divisible by both 4 and 6. So x and y-intercept are actually going to be pretty easy to find because for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for the y-coordinate, and for the y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for the x-coordinate. So if I plug 0 in for the y-value, I get 4x plus 0. I'm going to move this to the other side, so minus 12 over here equals negative 12, x equals negative 3. So I have an x-intercept of negative 3. And then for my y-intercept, I'll plug 0 in for x, so I have 4 times 0 is 0, plus 6y equals negative 12, divided by 6, y is negative 2. So that's my y-intercept. So I have a point at 0, negative 2, an x-intercept at negative 3, 0, and that is enough points to draw my line.